So as we move forward on our next slide, um, it's let's get moving. Physical and environmental vitality in our daily lives. Um, again, like I said, my name is Michelle Lucas, and joining me is the ever effervescent Mr. Stephen Bora. Thank you, Stephen, for being my co-host today. Of course, happy to be here, Michelle. And with that kind of intro, I think we need to work together more often. <laughs> yes. So go ahead to the next one. Are our slides freezing? Um, okay, there we go. Because I'm getting a hold on my end. I'm sorry. My camera is like, my um, screen is sticking. So um, we're talking about our tools for the day. So when we talk about our physical and our environmental vitality, this is a um, cafe of the six domains we hold um, dear here at Be Strong Families, our journey to vitality. And this is our regular one of part of our um, Journey to Vitality Cafe box, a deck of cards that you can also bring. Our questions will be coming straight from that deck today. And we'll be talking about our physical vitality. What does that really mean? Our physical vitality is the health and well-being of your body. Questions in this domain focus on how you want your body to look and feel. They also address your attitudes and habits regarding nutrition, exercise, sleep, and mindfulness. And then our environmental vitality is about how your surroundings influence your well-being. These questions in this domain focus you on how your home and neighborhood mirror your vitality and values. For some, building environmental vitality can include efforts to help the planet through recycling or environmental advocacy and can also include rehabbing or decluttering the places where you spend a lot of time. So. With that being said, let's get into our first question for today. And remember, you guys can always um, respond and connect with us through the chat. But if you go ahead and raise your hand, um, Andrew is working our tech, so he can definitely go ahead and unmute you. So here's our first question. Um, how does your work promote your physical vitality and how does it undermine it? So as we mentioned earlier, you're more than welcome to respond in the chat. Uh, if you'd like to share uh, with audio, just go ahead and use that raise hand function. I believe it's through the participants tab. Uh, we'll see that you've got your hand up and then we can go ahead and yield you the floor. Hey, welcome Elaine. I know that we're off screen share now. Andrew is kind enough to write the question in the chat. Uh, and we have Kimberly who says, they let me stretch or get up when I need to, but I don't have any time to physically exercise. Yes, finding that time in the day can be very difficult when you take into work uh, time commitments, family time commitments, personal commitments, uh, definitely can be very difficult to do, especially if we're working over 40 hours a week. Yes. Uh, we have Irene with her hand raised. Irene, if you'd like to go ahead. Uh, and share ways that your work promotes your physical vitality uh, or undermines it, yes. Hey everyone, this is Andrew, I'm the tech support. Uh, I've unmuted Irene, but I don't believe that she's unmuted herself. Um, so we can, uh, I'll be working with her in the chat and seeing if we can get that figured out, but uh, I guess, uh, Michelle, Stephen, do you have an answer to this question? Okay, okay. Come on, Come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, I see the little baby. Her baby wants to answer instead of her. So, um, Stephen, how does that work for you? How does the our job help us to be able to do that or undermine you? Yeah, well, one of the ways I really appreciate what Be Strong Families does is, you know, when we travel, we are beginning to return to, to in-person trainings. Uh, and I do know when we travel, we are allowed a gym stipend. Uh, so we're allowed uh, a stipend. I believe it's 25 bucks a day, which should get you into most gyms pretty much uh, for a one day pass uh, per day that you travel. So that's something that I really appreciate. That's uh, in our employment agreement that provides us the opportunity to work out, uh, you know, at a full scale gym, which I think is really nice. Yeah, 
I know for me too, I have um, found the on the YouTube to be quite helpful with the chair aerobics and things like that, that you can actually work out sitting from your desk and it doesn't have to be weights or things like that. Just lifting up the those jugs, those empty milk jugs or um, juice jugs, you can fill them up with water and you can use those. And then I have also um, have me an expanding desktop where when I'm on my laptop, I can spend, expand it to the standing position and spend some time standing as opposed to sitting 10, 12 hours just in this desk behind the computer. Um, I see Rebecca put in the chat, lots of computer work to complete, but they are letting me work at home, which means I can move around when needed without disturbing or distracting others. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, she also says, we have had many trainings on mindfulness, the importance of moving and getting outdoors. That is one thing I do love about being able to be um, online, us working from home, Stephen, is the fact that I have been able to host my classes actually on the road trip. I have driven out to California in the RV working being able to see different sites. I can pull over to the side with my um, hotspot, do my class and still have the Grand Canyon as part of my backdrop. So um, yeah, I'm kind of liking this, this mobile work office in the back of my car. So that works for me. That sounds awesome, Michelle. Yeah. Let's see, and I'm glad you brought up the, the uh, oh, sure. Um, cool. Go ahead, Steven. Okay. Well, I was going to say earlier, Michelle, I was glad you brought up this uh, idea of, because I think, you know, we're here working, you know, from home, sitting in front of a computer, um, cut relatively sedentary, right? This is a sedentary workspace. Uh, and I think that's one of the, the drawbacks from the physical vitality, at least for me, uh, with this position. But uh, I wanted to underline what you brought up about, you know, the things like the aerobics chairs and, and things that we can do, the standing desk you mentioned, um, you know, different ways that even if we do have you know, an office setting job ways to incorporate, you know, physical vitality here and there throughout that. And that's another way that I appreciate Be Strong Family supporting us. You know, they're always asking if we have the, the office supplies that we need to be successful. Uh, and I think, you know, I haven't personally taken on a standing desk. I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. Uh, I have tried it at my kitchen counter. I have tried it. Um, but I, I feel like the opportunity is there. Thanks. Yeah. Most definitely. And then one of the things I do like um, the fact of being reminded that being physically vital does not always include exercise in a gym. It can be something as simple as when I'm out in my everyday life um, uh, working or in my, you know, I mean, your personal life, parking a little further from the door and making that walk as opposed to getting that um, that parking space right up front. Or even when you're coming in to work, taking the stairs instead of the escalator or the elevator is um, one of the things too. So just trying to get that movement of getting that heart rate up whenever we can, you know, not just focusing on a gym, but try to do it whenever we can, whatever that may look like for you. Um, Carolyn talked about welcome to take a walk or stretch to move. We like to um, have a gym pass. Um, Kimberly said in the chat, they are making a wellness center at one of our office. And then Elaine says our office does chair exercise as we work at our leisure. That's pretty cool. Um, Kelly said my agency promotes staff wellness. For example, we have just completed participating in the March Mayhem walking competition statewide. All right. Let's see. And then Amanda says the company I work for has walking competitions each year to provide an incentive to move more. There are about 48 teams that join in our company that compete. Oh my goodness, Amanda. I'll have to find out where you guys are. <laughs> Thanks. Those are some great incentives. I think we'll have to bring this up at the next um, team meeting, Stephen. I think you may be onto something, Michelle. Yeah. It's all really right. cool too, hearing all the ways in which, you know, employers are supporting uh, their employees. Does anyone want to touch on, you know, ways that um, the, the, the job that they have or the work that they do perhaps undermines their physical vitality. Uh, and as we think about that, I see uh, Lelia, I hope I didn't butcher your name, please let me know if I did, uh, says that they take 30 minutes twice a week uh, to do exercises and take a walk when the weather is nice. Yes. Uh, and I hope the weather is nice where y'all are at today. I know we have people from all across uh, the country. It is quite nice. Finally, today in Chicago, we had some snow this past weekend, but it's starting <laughs> to get kind of nice. Oh, yeah. So Kimberly said her job undermines it by sitting 
all day at the computer, most definitely, um, Kimberly. And then I think it takes us the opportunity to really be vocal with our employer of what that looks like and feels like for our personal body and our personal space of just really being open to make sure that we're letting them know I cannot be at my best when my body is not at its best. How can you help me? How can they support us to help us do that? So thank you. I did find sitting at the computer was getting a bit rough, um, even with trying to do the different chairs and the ball seat and things like that. Like it's just tiring, right? I was finding it more in my knees that from sitting bent all day, uh, trying to get up, it's like, oh my goodness, I think I'll just sleep right here in a chair. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, anybody else? How have ways of your job undermining your um, physical vitality? Um, Andrew, are you right? You said you're raising your hand. Yeah, the tech support unfortunately doesn't have the raise hand icon, oh, so I'm I just sorry, post that ahead. in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. But just thinking about this question of how does your work promote your physical vitality and how does it undermine it? I think in part it's promoted by the very fact that we're even talking about physical vitality as a a core a part of your overall well-being that you need to be focusing on. So I'm very happy to have these kinds of, of conversations. And, you know, I saw this, uh, this topic get picked as a webinar, you know, like a couple of weeks ago, and I was really excited to be tech support for it just for that very reason. Um, and I feel like undermining it, um, I think a lot of times I tend to get zoned in on the computer. Sometimes I'm like reading small font and I tend to lean forward. And I know, especially with my family, like genetics that uh, we have bad backs. And that's something where I'm trying to be aware of my posture, even while I'm just at the computer. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm sitting in the right way. And it's hard at times because, you know, a lot of times nobody else is around and the only person, you know, you don't really need to care about your posture except for yourself. So that is a, a way that uh, it tends to be on the line. Um, thank you, Andrew. And then Lelia, um, William said in the chat, I sit at my desk a lot with my job. I try to take breaks throughout the day and walk around, do some neck and shoulder exercises. I was finding that pinch too, and also doing hand exercises so your hands don't get stiff. Um, that is one of the things that can definitely come up. I have found that even um, working on the computer for those extended amount of time was really um, undermining my eyesight. Like I wasn't a glass wearer before but the strain of constantly I was not aware of the blue light feature or whatever that you're supposed to have like on your computer um my optometrist helped me with that but also helped me to get my glass some glasses reading glasses with the tint and stuff in it uh lee lilia okay um how to get um the tint in for my reading glasses because sitting um, in front of the computer so long was giving me really bad migraines and trying to just recover from that after each day of work was just getting a bit much. So, um, yeah, so thank you all for, for sharing that information. And I'm glad you brought that up, Michelle, because I think a lot of this, you know, at least looking at this through the lens, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> of, you know, an office environment job, you know, it, it's kind of hard to work around this sedentary nature if we're choosing not to adopt the, the standing desk lifestyle. So thinking about, you know, the ways in which that we can incorporate different things to, you know, make us healthier and stronger uh, as we sit, you know, with an office job. And I was thinking about the blue light filter as well. So I use blue light filter. I noticed that, you know, uh, I would wake up and my eyes would just be super tired. Like I, I didn't get a full night of rest, even if I got eight to nine hours. And so I started using, you know, blue light filters on, on all my screens, cell phone, laptop, uh, and then also putting the brightness down, right? Trying to make it a less of a, of an impact using night mode uh, as much as possible on different, you know, web browsers and applications to avoid, you know, that strong, harsh light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. And then Tasha in the chat adds uh, that she does a lot of stretching exercises in her seat uh, and may stand up while working and encourage to take breaks as needed. And I think that's another really good point, too. Um, I almost kind of just painted it as a binary option between, well, you're sitting or you're standing. Uh, but, you know, even I think working towards something where it's like, OK, I'm going to use or utilize some sort of standing desk or environment for an hour a day. 
you know, and then maybe you build that to two hours a day. Uh, I don't think we need to look at this as if it's an either or option, uh, but really how can, again, we just incorporate different things that work for ourselves on an individual level. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. So, um, Andrew, did you want to go? Did you want to move to the next question? Thank you guys for your interaction. We really appreciate. Keep these comments coming. So our um, next question would be, how has your body changed over time and how do you deal with those changes? Andrew, put those in the chat. Um, and how has our body changed over time and deal with those changes? Um, well, we actually did our first in-person meeting um, as a group. Um, in my um, congregation just yesterday this weekend was our first time like back in person and I tell you I have not had to place shoes on my feet in like about two, two years so my feet was really recognizing the fact that they were being constrained in shoes for like two hours that I really really felt it so I'm like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. I have got to go shopping for something other than flip-flops and fuzzy slippers. So um, yeah, <laughs> um, just trying to deal with that change, like of your feet not even being ready to really like move within that, that space of just being constrained and walked on like <laughs> all day because I'm just kind of sitting for hours on end. So um, I've definitely noticed that change too. What about on that note, Michelle, I was just talking to uh, um, a buddy of mine and we're all in our, our early thirties pretty much. And he is uh, showed me this thing, they're, they're toe spacers. So it's like a silicon mold uh, that you can buy for your feet. And it basically just puts a little bit of space in between each of your toes. And it's supposed to be really good for like your foot health. Um, I haven't tried it myself, but he's already like, yo, these are, are really good. Um, so that might be an option for, for the people with the, the foot stuff. All um, right, you'll have to drop that in the chat for me. I need that. <laughs> I got you. I see Kimberly put in the chat, I have gotten older and I have gained weight and I don't love it. So I choose to eat better food and not eat late at night. And then Lilia said, I find that the older I get, the more I start falling apart, LOL. I was having pain with my feet and now I have inserted my shoes and it has helped me so much. Thank you. Um, and um, Reginald said right now, I'm going through gout and I'm going through some pain. I shouldn't have eaten that much of food that I wasn't supposed to have eaten. Most definitely. I know that for me, that was one of the things that was really undermining my physical too, of being at the computer. Sometimes I lose track of what time it is, what day it is. So I find myself not having a set feeding order, right? I'm like constantly snacking and munching. munching. So I have to um, consciously move the chips and, uh, you know, I am a chipaholic. I love, love, love the crunch. So I'm going to have to move it and try to place some carrots or some apples or things like that, that I can still get the crunch effect that uh, maybe my brain won't recognize that it's not potato chips. <laughs> have you tried pop chips yet? They're a, a baked potato chip brand. They're a little expensive because healthy food or, you know, some of these health brands are obviously a little bit pricier, but strongly recommend them, Michelle. I'm going to have to try it. <laughs> They used to carry them at Costco and it was reasonable, but I haven't seen them there in a while. Okay. Some pop chips. Okay. I'll look for pop that. chips. And then Carolyn says, I have joint pain and I make sure I stay hydrated and move a lot. Stagnation is not a good thing for me. Cut off all food at 7 p.m. Liquids only after seven. Great discipline, Miss Carolyn. And then Tasha said, when I get busy, I neglect myself. So uh, I will occasionally set alarms reminding myself to eat. Yes, and to stay hydrated. I'm so glad you mentioned that, um, Carolyn, because I know that's one of the things that sometimes I feel guilty because I know that we, you know, I'm going from class to class and I'm afraid to drink like, okay, I don't want to drink water because I'm going to have to leave and I got to leave my class and I got to take a bio break or something like that. So I'll try to wait until I'm done where I used to do that. Not anymore because I recognize that it has started setting up um, what do you call it? Hypertension because you're not getting hydrated enough and you're just sitting, like you said, Miss Carolyn, stagnated 
it will start to affect your um, your pressure and things like that. So I'm trying to be more conscious about making sure um, that I'm not eating um, salty things while I'm sitting here at my computer and also getting enough fluid and water as well. And it's okay to drop in the chat, BRB, I'll be right back. <laughs> Keep the class down, I'll be back. <laughs> Andrew adds, um, he broke his foot in November and it has taken running recreationally out of his life for the time being. Uh, he reminds himself that the weight gain and lack of exercise that he's dealing with right now uh, is part of the result of making sure the foot heals properly. It's a stage of life and he knows eventually he can get back to running uh, at a pace that is good and healthy for his foot. Yeah, I'm sorry you're, you're having to deal with that, Andrew. Um, you know, when we're, we're dealing with an injury and the rehabilitation of an injury is, is never easy. You know, I myself, uh, I tore my ACL, you know, years ago, never really got it looked at, finally got it surgically repaired. Uh, but the doctor told me, he's like, you've got the knee, knee of an old person, like a, a 70 year old person. I'm like, ugh. but trying to, so, you know, I can't do basketball. I haven't really tried running. Uh, and this is maybe something I need to look into doing is I'm sure there are things that I could do to strengthen, you know, my, the, the muscles around my knee, uh, but I've been avoiding it. So that's on me. I think I need to, to, to figure out ways that I can, can build the muscle. So there's less, uh, stress on that joint. Mm -hmm. And then Ashley said, when I get overwhelmed or stress is easy to stress eat. Instead, I will listen to music and read. Um, yeah, Ashley, I've taken to, um, virtual, um, coloring. I like the, the virtual coloring books that sometimes when I get overwhelmed, I'll get into my coloring book as well. Um, Lynn says, I gained um, weight and decided one day a couple of months ago to get into my well-beingness mode now. With healthy eating and exercise, I stay inspired with new info from YouTubers so I do not get bored. Okay. And then Asali has her hand raised. Yes, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I've retired uh, for some years now, but I found that my insurance will pay for a uh, silver slipper. I just enrolled in that where I could go and do the exercise and not uh, lay around because really too, nothing too much I could do as far as being retired. I used to drive the CTA bus. So that's, so anyway, I started with the welder. So I was going to go down there next Monday to see what's going on so I could get into exercise and I definitely drink enough water but I enjoy being retired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Um, and then Lilia said, hello, I have to, oh, she's gonna be signing off. Well, thank you. Please see the video later. Thank you for checking in with us. Um, okay, so um, Andrew, did you wanna, are we moving to the next question? Um, Ashley said, I try to, in the morning, drink a glass of water and at night also. And when I'm stressed, I will also sometimes write a grateful list and stress, stretch. I'm sorry, and stress. That sounded horrible. Grateful list and stretch. <laughs> yes, that is one of, that is a great thing too, Miss Ashley, about taking that time of what we are grateful for and what we can really be grateful for. It takes us right into our um, great, um, our next question when we talk about our environment, environmental vitality, what is important to you about your environment, right? It could be like, what are you grateful for about your environment? So what is important to you about your environment? This is a good one. I like this question a lot. Um, I think first and foremost for me, it's probably safety. I wanna make sure I feel safe and secure uh, in my environment. And once I've achieved that, then I like a little bit uh, of excitement. And I like to make sure, um, you know, I have a, a well uh, design. I want it, I want it to look good uh, with, with, you know, pictures, painting, furniture. Uh, I'm kind of an interior design nerd. Uh, I just, you know, I, I like looking at certain things. I think the, the, this little background we got going on, obviously virtual, not real, but I think that looks pretty cool um, behind me, if y'all can see that a little bit. Um, so those are some of the things that are important for, for my environment. All right. Um, I think for me, I don't know, maybe in my other life, I was a mole rat because I love like to be in the dark. I love to be um, in close. I don't know, like the closeness or the 
my kids just consider it just the clutter, but I know that there is a, um, there is a method to my madness. I know what everything is. I know if it's been touched. I know if things are out of place to other people looking in, it might just look like the color clutter, but it keeps me um, kind of grounded. I like, um, I don't know. I just like to be so like everything has a story and a history to it of how I just hold on to things I need to definitely do like Miss Vivian and try to unclutter. I just have not gotten at 50. I have not figured out how to do it yet. I'm still working on it. And then <laughs> Ashley put into the chat comfortable and relaxing and not boring, but also not overwhelming. Thank you. And she said, my environment is comfortable and family oriented. Okay, thank you. And let's see, Lilia said in the chat, being organized, listen to soothing music. Yeah, I like, I like to play music too, but I like the, the upbeat. I want to jump around. I want to, I like the old kind of, as my kids say, the old school music, music from the 70s and 80s kind of to take me 90s back to my childhood because I love to laugh and be silly. I am just, you know, that's my environment, environment where I can laugh and just relax and be myself is just a great um, environment for me, whether it is a physical place or just the people that I'm surrounded by that makes my environment. I like that feeling. So um, for me, I am definitely a road trip type of person. Any environment where I can be on the road and moving, I don't care if it's 150 miles to the grocery store. Like, I just want to be out moving is the environment for me. <laughs> and I, I too want to uh, follow up almost. So Ashlyn, uh, you mentioned that you're, you like your environment to be comfortable and family oriented. Uh, so like, what are the things you look for? What does that look like to you? Um, what are the things that make you comfortable or, or make your environment family oriented? Uh, if we start to delve into some of these details. Uh, and I agree with the music thing. I think the, the music and, and sound, right? I, I hope I'm not jumping the gun on our next question. I'm going to double check. No, we're not. Okay, wonderful. So we can talk uh, about sounds and noises uh, without touching our other question. Uh, but sound is super important, you know, thinking about, you know, uh, obviously, Michelle and I are in the city of Chicago, like, uh, you know, being on a noisier street, like a more main thoroughfare, uh, or, you know, being on a, on a side street that's a little bit quieter. You know, I like being in a place where I can hear birds. Um, I hated it as a kid growing up. I would be like, oh, my gosh, will these birds shut up? Uh, I don't want to hear you. Uh, but as I got older, I was like, oh, that's so nice to hear the birds chirping and singing. Like, I really like it. It makes me feel uh, more of a part of nature. Uh, I used to live in, in California uh, and we lived in a, in a cul-de-sac and I never thought about it before. And after living there for two years, I was like, I really like living in a cul-de-sac. The only people that come on this street are the people that like live on this street. Like they're here for a reason. No one's trying to get anywhere. Uh, it was really nice. I really enjoyed living in, uh, on a cul-de-sac. Yes. I see um, Lynn said in the chat, I like my environment to feel like a sanctuary for the spirit with inspiring family photos, positive words on the wall and surrounded by books. I love, love, love to read. Yes, I do too. Um, it's Lynn. one of the things I've gotten into is, um, you know, when we started with our pandemic, but even before then, I used to check out the, the live recording of mystery readings on the books. I used to love, love which I still do, um, listen to, um, what do they call it? The audio books. But I love the mystery kind. I love to be, um, to hear that, the dark suspense in my ears. And when I'm doing a road trip, I will cut it on. And I love driving at night. The whole effect is just me and the mystery reader just reading the book. And I can get so lost into the reading. I would love to get back into that. And Miss Tasha said, I love sounds of running water. But I, I share an office, so I have to be mindful of others. Yes. I had a coworker once that loved that um, white light noise. Um, you know, that it's that fan or the like, right? And I'm like, oh my goodness, like would somebody unplug that? Like, why, why is that thing just humming? Like it was so irritating, but I knew that that was something that she needed. And so I started to just wear my headphones 
right? So um, as we find uh, um, things that um, satisfy us in our environment, yes, it is great, Ms. Tasha, to be thinking about other people around us who might be affected um, by what makes us feel comfortable and being mindful of the spaces that we share. Great. Andrew said the fan at night is essential. Yes. <laughs> Just that noise, right? You need to hear it of things that help you feel calm in your environment. Anybody else? I want to mention too, this idea of adapting to the environment. Um, you know, I'm currently looking for a new place to move into with my girlfriend. We currently don't live together. We're about to move in together. Um, and the one thing that I think is going to be true is not everything is going to be perfect, right? We're not going to find all of our wants and needs uh, in a place. So again, kind of adapting, you know, our physical environment to, you know, for the things that it falls short, how can we adapt? So just for example, right now, uh, the current building I'm in is like, I don't know, 80 units. So it's a relatively big building. So on the plus side, that makes me feel secure. On the con side, uh, I am right above the back door that most people use. Uh, and it's a dog friendly building. So all in the morning, I hear dogs barking. I hear the door opening and closing. Uh, and that kind of stinks. So what did I do to adapt? Right. I now sleep with earplugs um, and it's kind of a game changer. Uh, so again, you know, uh, figuring out the, the ways to kind of adapt to the environment uh, in a way that that's conducive to our to our uh, environmental success. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Stephen, do you find that part of sharing that environment with another group of, you know, I mean, because now you have to share that space, you said with almost about 80 other um, homes or whatever um, of even finding that space of what is our environment going to look like as a group, as a unit. I know you mentioned about dogs, you know, of really set in standard of what, what do we expect? Like, I know that there's a lot of puppies here. So when you go out, make sure that I'm not um, bothered by your, your puppy's business when I go, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so um, how do you find, that space like of when you're living or for anybody um, when we're living with other people in our community with, is also considered our environment. How do we move or make that concession um, when maybe that necessarily would not be my way of doing it, but how do I come to terms with your way and find peace? That's a really good question, Michelle, and it's a really difficult question. Uh, and I do think about it. Um, and the the best thing I can I can say to that is because those moments certainly do come up uh, is I try to assume optimistic assumptions about people um, at all times. Now, I don't obviously do that, but that's the practice and the philosophy that I work towards. Uh, so when there are things like inconsiderate dog owners uh, that don't pick up after their dog uh, or let their dog use the bathroom right in front of the door, these kinds of things, I try to have optimistic assumptions like, oh, this person must have forgotten uh, to bring their bags and they meant to. Um, this person must have been, you know, looking at their phone and their dog uh, was going, you know, right in front of the door and they didn't notice. Uh, because occasionally these things have happened to me too. They're obviously the exception, um, but they have happened. So trying to just have that understanding uh, and, and trying to have the perspective that people have optimists and, and making those optimistic assumptions about people uh, and the perspectives of what they do. Um, is probably the biggest thing I can do for when my, uh, you know, environmental vitality is, is challenged due to the number of the large number of people in the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I live on a, um, a very quiet street. Um, most of everyone here is generational homeowners. Um, they've been here since uh, my grandparents bought the, the property in this block. And now we're at the grandchildren's kids um, stage of who's still like in the block in the community. So a very quiet block. And um, it's pretty much where the older ones who live here kind of tell new people when they try to move in, hey, this is how we do things on this block. This is how this is done. So you get that whole um, block community type of idea of what times during the day they can play 
different music that we're not necessarily used to hearing, but also everybody has the right to have their own type of music that they enjoy. You know, they just kind of put like a time limit, like after this time, you know, out of consideration of others, you know, um, try to turn it down or whatever, the parking situation, things like that can definitely be a thing that really affects your environment of how you see it. Right. If if you're living full of home owners, do we all maintain the grass? Are we all going to maintain the snow? Are there going to be trash cans available at the front that allows people who walk through your neighborhood to be able to put trash actually into the receptacles can really determine of how you feel in your environment outside of your house can make a big difference of what you feel like when you're walking just even through um, through your community. So has anybody else um, have those issues or how do you deal with those issues when the outside environment might be something that is affecting your um, environmental vitality? Tasha adds in the chat that she just had a change uh, her household went from three to six and her environment has now changed drastically. Uh, she's learning not to sweat the small stuff and to learn that not everything has to be my way. So I'm learning to be more adaptable and acceptable of the things uh, I am not used to. Kudos to you, Tasha, because that is a big <laughs> change, doubling the household size. Uh, I can only imagine the, the changes uh, that come along with that many added people in the household. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Thank you. And we do find that our environment being what it is, being that this is life, things change all the time. I think it's our ability to adapt to the changes. Either we're going to adapt or we pretty much get run over. <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things, right? So we're moving as our neighborhoods change, as our household change, just even as the look of this world changes, right? This is our environment um, stretches outside of just our household to our communities, to our nation. How does that look for us? How how do we respond to when those things show up, right? Um, being able to be that example, um, not just for ourselves, but also for our children or for um, our young people we may have access to or interaction with. How does that look? I know that was one of the things I was even saying with um, sharing with my children that at 50, them being in high school seems like it was so long ago. And high school looks so different for them, like their environmental um, high school life for them to be there through um, COVID, a, a, you know, a, a national pandemic having to do homeschool, like that environment looks totally different to what high school environment looked like for me um, coming up in the 80s, um, you know, to go through high school. So how do you now make that conversation with them of how to adapt to this new, <clears throat> their new environment too, and make sure that they're striving, um, you know, that, that they have that vitality as well, right? It's about being vital and striving. Um, Reginald said, I've been staying in extended stay hotels for the last year and I have been on pins and needles sometimes. I'm trying to get my own place soon. Yes, yeah, so you definitely don't know who's coming and going. And I'm sure you probably hear doors and elevators all night, Reginald. That can definitely be something that your environment is probably affecting your physical too. So we hope you stay um, upbeat and try to do whatever you can to adapt to the situation um, you in as, as you continue to reach for your vitality as well. Yeah. So Andrew, um, what is our last question as we start to wrap up? <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. So if you could live anywhere, where would you live and why? Andrew has put that in the chat for us. So anybody, if you could live anywhere, where would you live and why? That is a quite loaded question. It is a lot of different you? angles on this yes. one. Yes. <laughs> what about you, Stephen? What do you think? If you could live anywhere, where would you live? I will say I really struggle with these kinds of questions. Um, I would just, you know, I'm in Chicago right now. I want to live in Chicago. The only thing that I say I might change is I'd like to live in a single family uh, house in Chicago instead of a, a condo or apartment. Right. Probably somewhere on a cul-de-sac, huh, Stephen? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Carolyn said she's on her way to the Virgin Islands. Yes, Miss Carolyn. And then um, Lilia said um, someplace warm. Yes, I feel that. Like now that my knees are, whoo, this, this old age, arthritis is no joke. I think I want to go someplace warm too. Um, and then Jamie said anywhere with her hubby. LOL, it's who you are around. Yes. Um, Ashlyn said, Hawaii. Okay. Maui, Hawaii. I heard that place was so expensive. The gallons of milk were like $10. I think I'm going to have to stay in the U.S. Um, Reginald said, I like to live in Denver because I visited and really liked it. I actually used to live in Aurora, Colorado, which is right outside of Denver. It was a pretty nice place, too. Um, Carolyn said, environment and culture. Um, would um, base her decision. And Rebecca says somewhere it doesn't get too hot or too cold. Rebecca, when you find that place, let me know. All of the places that doesn't get either too hot or too cold, it's too muggy or too damp, or <laughs> it's not enough stuff to do. Like I need to have where, for me, I think I would be definitely looking for a big city type of environment where there's a lot of activities to do, but there's also a quiet spot where you can just kind of unwind, right? I don't want to live like in the midst of the Las Vegas strip where it's always moving. But if I lived at Arizona, I can kind of get to Las Vegas. I can leave. I can move. You know what I mean? Like in a city, but not mm -hmm. in the country. I don't want to live where my next neighbor is about, 30, 40 minutes away. That's entirely too far, but I kind of like the, you know, not the whole sit on a building. I think I would do definitely a home, but not the apartment buildings where everybody is kind of smashed in and, you know, you really don't have that private kind of space for me. Um, I feel that. Let's, let's see. We're getting a lot of um, information in chat too, um, Stephen. Um, yeah. What I Pam says, a uh, warmer environment. And then Tasha said, I would like to stay in my same town. However, I would like a larger home. I would love to move to my, I would love to move my mother and daughter in to help them at this stage in their lives. Oh, she is so family oriented. I'm trying to get mine out. <laughs> 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 and let's see, Rebecca said, will do and i agree but western washington state is not a good place to be when it's over 100 degrees these are guys it got that hot up there really i thought it always rained in washington myself i thought it was a rainy place yeah hmm. okay um lynn says i like where i live but would love to be in a ranch style home with a beautiful view and a gourmet kitchen with the high level of walkability. Oh, also peaceful. You guys are coming with a whole paradise vibe for me. Um, Rebecca, yes, it rains, but last summer we had horrible heat. Okay. All right. Uh, Andrew, Andrew said, adds, uh, go ahead. I'm seeing yeah, that. he'd love to stay in the Minneapolis St. Paul, uh, but with 90% less snow. That's a lot less snow, Andrew. <laughs> uh, but then again, I think we might be, uh, I'm a little biased, uh, Michelle. I know we did not have very much snowfall at all in Chicago. Uh, this was actually the longest amount of time uh, into the winter it had gone before we had measurable snowfall in the city. Uh, I think yeah. the first time was in like late January where there was actually accumulation. And that was the, the longest on record, uh, which wow. began being tracked in like the early 1900s. Yeah. But the bad thing about Chicago, once it started, it couldn't seem to stop. Like you said, we got snow, even though it wasn't measurable. Who wants to see snow popping around in March and then a little bit at April? Like, stop it already. Um, mm. <laughs> Andrew say he grew up on the shores of Lake Superior in northern Wisconsin. So there could be snow until early June in some years. Wow. OK, no longer complaining, Andrew. So the less snow in the Twin Cities, the better. Cool. Yeah, we're actually planning a road trip up to uh wherever the mall of america is i know it's somewhere with the twin cities so i hope it's not snowing when we come up for spring break next week all right cool let's see it'll be fun i remember going there as a kid but i can't remember where it's at i would have to imagine it's in that twin cities area yeah 
Okay. So when you guys think about how all of these kind of come together, as we think about our vitality um, um, of our bringing ourselves to another vital level, like how do we get to this level of making sure that we're matching our physical and our environmental, how the both might affect each other? Are there things that you would like to do differently or change or, you know, things like that as you think about it? Let's see. Oh, you guys are still talking about the mall. I thought you were putting in new, new information in the chat. Okay. <laughs> we, can we can talk about new information. I think the biggest thing for me is uh, I kind of alluded to it earlier uh, with that kind of binary perspective of either doing something or not doing it. Uh, and I think I meet, need to be more adaptable and more flexible where I can have a day, you know, where I kind of eat, you know, junk food. And then the next day I'm still able to bounce back and go to the gym or even do those two things on the same day where usually I kind of compartmentalize where like, oh, I'm going to be 100% like healthy this week. And then the next day, it's just like the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, so being more flexible uh, in, you know, the uh, physical uh, vitality realm. Yeah. Okay. I like what Pam said, although Chicago have wonderful food, but the weather is unstable. I think that that really um, resonates with me because that affects my physical as well as my environmental, right? Because our environment is surrounded by great food and great activities to do here in Chicago. I mean, it's so many pockets of little, you can travel the world just within the city of Chicago, right? Of just the food options that is around. So I think that part of SI um, work to try to be part of my environment. I'm going to have to physically move around with my different food options as I go from restaurant to restaurant to staff room. Maybe find a way where I can do a walking food tour as opposed to driving and sitting. So I'm going to try for that. <laughs> and then let's see. We got Lynn says, aim high to take care of yourself. Keep yourself vital by always moving forward, no matter where one is in mind, body, and spirit. Thank you so much, um, Lynn. And same here, Jamie says, I would like to um, self-regulate more to be more adaptable. And Pam says, exactly. Um, Malaya is speaking. Hi, Malaya. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so um, we're just, Malaya, we're just talking a little bit about how our vitality shows up for us our environment, how does our environment affect maybe our physical or maybe our physical affects our environment and how do we, um, you know, come to an equal medium about it as we pull up our vitality levels of really taking the best care of ourselves as possible. So if you guys um, want to go ahead and put those, um, those comments in the chat, Andrew has also given us the link in the chat so that if you came in late or you would like to see this webinar from the beginning, that link is there. Also, that link, once you follow that link, it will also um, get us to where you can see um, <laughs> you can see where you can see all the other webinars that are there too. Um, Malaya says, why can't I talk? Oh, we do this by the chat. So if there's something that you would like to speak out, if someone would like to share their voices to the room, go ahead and raise your hand and our tech person can um, unmute you. <laughs> okay, you don't have to feel alone, Malaya. You're in the room with all of us. We are here. We have you. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hey, I was just saying, hey, y'all. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> Okay. Um, these wisdom teeth hurt. They just gave me some medicine, though, my shield. That's how I wanted to tell you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So that's one of the things in our physical as we move through our vitality that things happen to our body that can limit or help, you know, stop us from being at our very best. Something simple as maybe we might have a cold, the flu shows up, we have to get our wisdom teeth pulled or things like that, a cavity, right? It definitely hinders how we move physically and might change the environment for our family around us who have to deal with us during that time. Because sometimes when we're sick and grumpy and hurting, we might not be 
at our best selves physically. So sometimes it might change the environment of our family around us. Um, thank you, um, Ms. Tasha. She says, certainly, it certainly does. So um, here, Andrew has shared our poll. You can go ahead and take the time to go ahead and fill that out. Yeah, so we just have two questions. How did you like today's webinar? And uh, go ahead and rate it on a scale of one to five. Uh, and then just check which apply on kind of your connection to be strong families, like how you kind of heard about this webinar. Uh, and uh, Malay, I'm glad you brought up that that idea of teeth. That's something I think I often overlook for physical vitality, but the, the health of our teeth, uh, I definitely overdo on going to the dentist. So I think I need to add that to my to-do list. Uh, we invite everybody to uh, hashtag amplify uh, something. Today, we're going to focus on hashtag amplifying, get moving, focusing on that physical vitality. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and add that to the chat or any kind of social media post, uh, if this has kind of resonated and stuck with you, feel free to do so. Uh, you can also add your own uh, hashtag amplify. Uh, Andrew in the chat adds hashtag amplify environment and activity. Yes. Since, yeah, wow. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm glad you went there and got it taken care of, though. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same, but I still got all my wisdom teeth. I'm nervous of taking that time off <laughs> <laughs> just from the recuperating standpoint. Uh, hashtag amplify self-care. Hashtag amplify balance. Yes, loving these, these amplifies. These are great. Thank you. Guys. Feel free to continue to put those in the chat. Uh, we want everyone to join us this spring as we spring into vitality from now through June. Uh, there's going to be a variety of fun events that will bring us together in focus of community, wellness, and growth. Uh, for more details and information about these uh, Spring into Vitality events, Andrew has so kindly put the link in the chat, uh, which will carry or, or have a bunch of those links. You're also more than welcome to scan the QR code uh, with your phone's camera in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Hashtag Amplify Drink Water. Hashtag Amplify Exercise. Yes. Twin mom, boys mom, mom of three. Yes. <laughs> That's Amplify running nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as we said, Amplify relax. Thank you. And then lastly, uh, we want to invite everybody for our Taste of Vitality Cafes. Uh, this upcoming one on Friday, April 8th is going to be at noon. Uh, and our theme is, oh, the places you'll go. Uh, these are our cafes, uh, and our cafe on Friday will be an hour and a half. I believe it will run till 1.30. Uh, but if you if you know and love our BSF cafes, feel free uh, to join us here on Friday. Uh, if you've never experienced a cafe and you kind of like this format of uh, open discussion, uh, it's a little bit more of an intimate discussion environment uh, where we get to dive deeper into some questions with smaller uh, breakout groups where everyone kind of has their cameras on and we're speaking with one another. Uh, we do have some upcoming webinars for this week available in both Spanish and English. Uh, and Andrew dropped the link in the chat for these webinars for this week as well. Thank you, Andrew. Subscribe to us on YouTube. All these webinars are, are live streamed on YouTube as well as through this Zoom medium. Uh, and then also with our BSF uh, YouTube account, you can catch all our old webinars. You can peruse it at your leisure and find which topics are most interesting to you. There's a lot of great content from BSF uh, staff and board members uh, and outside subject matter experts as well. So a lot of really excellent content there available on YouTube in both English and Spanish. That will bring us to a close. Uh, thank you everybody for, for being here with us this afternoon. We hope you enjoyed uh, the webinar as much as we did. Uh, and looking by the poll results, it seems like that is indeed the case. Uh, so thanks again, and I hope to see y'all uh, at the next webinar. Thank you so much.